So this all started with me having a laugh on Twitter. A few days ago while browsing Twitter, I came across a funny post that went something like this, but in Dutch. Ever been rejected for not doing drugs? Well, I have. I read the post and I thought it would be about being denied for a position because they did not want to take drugs, which sounded ridiculous, so I was intrigued. I checked the replies only to learn that it was about a date, not a job interview. Reading on, they stated, this was about the drug ecstasy. She wanted a partner that she would be able to do pills with when going to festivals. To me, the combination of taking pills and dating made me think of a funny comment, so I replied, well, that's to be expected when you arrange a date on a website called iliketoswallow.com. But I bet you thought that meant something else, didn't you? I replied in Dutch, since the original post was also in Dutch, and the domain name I came up with was called igduslikke.nl. I made sure that the domain didn't exist because I didn't want to send somebody to some raunchy site. But uh, yeah, I thought that was funny. The guy then actually replied with, so I clicked the link, full of suspense, but nothing happened. Which made me go, okay, I need to register that domain and make something funny out of this. I went ahead and registered the domain to make sure that when somebody clicks a link, it would actually show something. I started creating a small website to show off the funny tweet and figured it would be a nice meta joke. Since it would be a very minimal website, I decided to implement something I always wanted to do, but never got around to actually doing, which is to make the site automatically be either dark or light themed. For a while now, you've been able to set your preferences in Windows 10, Android and iOS, allowing websites and applications to present a dark theme based on your preference. There is a CSS media query that allows you to target people who have dark mode as their preferred operating system theme, and the Twitter widget supports dark mode. But in order to render a tweet in dark mode, they want you to set a meta tag in your HTML. So how do we get a meta tag to be set based on the CSS media query and have it read before the JavaScript of the Twitter widget starts loading? We use a function called match media, which lets you do media queries in JavaScript. Since the Twitter widget is loaded asynchronously, I made sure my script that does the detection does not load asynchronously, which means the script will execute before the Twitter widget gets loaded, allowing me to add the required meta tag to the HTML in the website's head element. The Twitter embed first renders as a block quote HTML tag, and when it loads, it gets transformed into a block that's a maximum of 550 pixels wide. To make sure the content does not jump too much while loading, I made sure to add a max width rule of 550 50 pixels to keep the content jumping around to a minimal. I also figured I'll add a link to my YouTube channel with the hopes of maybe getting some more subscribers. I'm currently at 31, so subscribe if you're not subscribed already, but the default font doesn't really look that good. So I headed over to Google Fonts, which is an awesome resource where you can find web fonts that you can use free of charge and pick Montserrat for the text. To create a nice teaser header, I wanted a dripping font to fit with the joke, and I picked Nosifier for that. Next up was a YouTube icon. I remember I created a sprite for a resale game jam submission and figured that I'd use that. But the sprite is white and websites don't really do sprite rendering the same way a game engine like Unity does. Or does it? There's a CSS property called Filter, and it allows you to do all sorts of nice stuff. So by putting the brightness at half, sepia to full, and saturation to 10,000%, you can turn a white image red. So that's exactly what I did. Last challenge, I wanted to showcase the website both in light and dark theme, so I added some logic to force either a white or a dark theme via a hash in the URL, hashtag dark or hashtag light. To accomplish this, I added some logic to check the window.location.hash property to see if there was an override present, and if so, I would add a class to the document's body element to pick up the desired effect in CSS. I used the dark class, and the normal CSS rules to override the default white theme without the media query reporting back a dark theme. And to the dark theme rules, I added a not light condition to make sure the dark theme rules are not applied when we want to force the light theme. We then need to also set the meta tag for the dark theme when our override is present. The last part to tackle is applying the hash when the page has already loaded, when you want to switch from one theme to the other. The hash in the URL is special because the hashtag and everything after that does not get sent to the server when you request it, which also means that by changing the hash in your URL bar and hitting enter, does not actually reload the page. I can detect the change and apply new CSS rules, but that would not have an effect on the already loaded Twitter widget. So what I did was add some logic to just refresh the page if a change is detected. So here's the result. 
And since I made a video about it, I figured I'd also register the translated English domain so you can go to ilikethesswallow.com and watch this video or share it with a friend. I hope you liked this as much as I did. What was your best joke on Twitter? Please let me know in the comment section below.